Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today our review is a homeschool planner. So I know that this is not for everyone, but I really wanted to review this company called A Plan in Place because they have amazing customizable options, not only for student planners, but for your homeschool teacher planner. And I have not seen another company like this. And this review is going to be a little bit longer than normal because I have a homeschool teacher edition to go through and a homeschool student edition to go through. And I really want to show all the details for those that are homeschool mamas and that are interested in this. I want to show them what they're getting and the possibilities. But I am really excited to share this company. I had actually not heard of them. This is a subscriber request. And I am really grateful a subscriber requested this because I would not have been aware out of it. And I love to help out these really amazing small companies run by moms who just do a phenomenal job. And they were phenomenal the whole step of the way while I was working on my planner and very helpful. So I highly recommend a plan in place. I will put their link down below. Okay. So first of all, let's start off and just say they have so many options for even for different ages for your homeschool planner. So they have an early learner edition. Okay, this is under the student planners, but I just wanna tell you the editions they offer. They offer an early learner edition, which is even pre-readers, they can have a planner. They have the student edition, which is the one that I'm gonna review for my coming up fourth grader next year. They have the high school edition, and then they have the teacher edition, which is what I have here, and then they have a summer edition. And there are so many things you can put in and change and customize about each one. So let's get into the teacher edition. And let me mention and not forget, these are completely affordable planners. They are, this one I added several things in and it only came to $26.45. And my student edition, I also added customizable things in, and it was only $25.95. And I forget how many, but they do offer a discount on bulk sales. So if you have several children homeschooling, I forget at what count they offer a discount on that. But check out their site, and if you have any questions on that, email them, email them with those questions. Okay, so one of their cool features is they have some pre-made covers you can choose from but they also have where you can easily upload a picture of your own and put it on your front cover. And I just think it makes it really feel special, like your own. And so this is a picture from when we were camping this past Thanksgiving break in a cabin at Lake Murray in Oklahoma. And so I uploaded that picture on there. And this picture that I put on my son's student planner is just from the park by our house at a sunset. And so I put those little pictures on the front because I'm big into nature pictures. And these pictures are not just, you know, random nature pictures. They bring up many memories and feelings for me because they're personal. And then you can get your name on it. This front cover is laminated and very heavy duty. So this is an eight and a half by 11 planner and it's not too thick and you don't have a huge spiral to contend with. You have just exactly what you need. Um, they leave this as a doodle page. You can use wet erase or permanent marker on this, just like you can the Erin Condren covers. Of course, it's not quite as thick as the Erin Condren cover, but it is, it's pretty darn thick, and I think it will hold up just great for the whole year. So here is your teacher edition. You even have tabs in this, you guys. Um, I will mention they do have an option where you can print your own. So you can either have them do it, or you can print and bind your own for cheaper. So they do have that option, but I think they put it together so nicely and for such an affordable price that if you can do that, I don't know why you wouldn't because like I said, they even have the tabs and everything on here for you. So the first tab is goals and planning. You have a page for your mission statement, mission planning board, a brainstorming board for just for ideas for the year or the next coming up year. Um, you have several brainstorming boards. So throughout the year, if you're working on different projects or thinking about the next year, um, or just, you know, about one particular project or book that you're reading or history study, you have some brainstorming boards there. You have a place for my goals. You have goal, 
action steps, so three action steps, target dates, and did you do it? I really like this because it's simple. It's just, it's right here on one page, and I could see myself making really attainable, useful goals. Okay, my responsibilities. This is if you want to remember weekly what you kind of want each day of the week to be possibly lined out for and what do you want to do every day. So, you know, one day might be a laundry, one day might be an errand day, one day might be a meal prep day, whatever. And then just daily tasks that you want to make sure you get done every day. And then monthly tasks you want to make sure happen every month and yearly tasks. So those could either be related to home school or your home, taking care of your home. Okay, so time blocking. I like how they give you two options here. So you can play around with it. So it's figuring out what do you want to use every hour of your day for. So, you know, you can map it out. And if this plan isn't working great, you have, you know, an option two plan. Curriculum and resources right here. And they have first semester, second semester. So you can keep track of what you're using. Um, keep track of maybe where you bought it, how much it cost, the child that used it, and any notes you want to remember about that. Here is a family plan. So you have the school year outlined. This is for your current year. And this is long-term thinking. So you have your school year outlined, the name of the child, the grade, the subject, and then any curriculum notes about that subject. So for each child, you would have their subjects listed and just kind of thinking about, you know, who's doing what subjects, what curriculum are they using, and how is that working? And these are long-term plans and notes on those same things. I think these are just really good ways to organize this. With me only homeschooling one of my children, I don't have as much to keep track of on this front. But like my sister homeschools her three boys, and I just think anywhere where you're getting several kids, homeschooling them, you know, keeping track of all this stuff in one place and in just really a manner that makes sense to me is awesome. Okay, so here's a homeschool budget for current year and next year. I love how they do that on everything. So you have just a savings plan, items to sell, projected income, homeschool needs, what's the projected cost, wants projected cost, conferences that you might want to go to, and book sales. Here is a field trip planning page for ideas and details about the trip. And so here's some more details. Cost per person, start time and length, the max number of kids that can come. So like if you're calling a museum and taking notes on this or you're calling, you know, a family farm, you have this to take some notes on for each different field trip venue and maybe compare it. So I think that's a great page. Long range planning form. So this is just thinking of long range planning and plans you want to make. Then you have um, a meal planning space for you. So while this planner is predominantly for homeschool, they do add in stuff like this because when you're a homeschool mom, this is part of your day. This is part of your day and kids are included in making meals and learning to clean up and this type of thing. So she has this meal planning place, breakfast favorites, lunch favorites, good books to read. So just books you're maybe thinking of that you don't want to forget. Okay, our next tab section. So that's your goals and planning section. Our next tab section is calendars. So I have um, started my planner. Here's the cool thing. You can start this planner in any month you want. So I started it in September of 2018. So she gave me the 2018 and 2019 look ahead calendar. I started mine in September 2018 to run for our entire next school year. While we do start school um, like mid-August this year, and we will start with our school district since my older son um, attends public school, um, I didn't need to start this in August because I'm, I was really okay starting the first full month that we're in. So you can choose on these calendars to have them in your planner or not have them at all. I wanted to have them, and you can also choose if it's a two-page spread, like the calendar September would take up two pages, or if you just want it to take up one page. I just liked this because I don't keep a whole lot on our homeschool calendar. 
So this takes me through our entire um, next school year and beyond because it she gives you a whole 12 months of this. And then I even got an extra month because she just gave me the back of that sheet too. So it actually went more than 12 months there. But I love being able to have just that calendar section there because you can just easily turn to your calendars and they're just simple one page spreads. You can, I can number our weeks of school because I like to do that. I can write, you know, all the major plans in and it's just, it's really nice to have that look there. Okay, the next tab is weekly schedule. So here is the meat of the planner, my weekly plan. And there are some different uh, weekly plan configurations you can choose. This is the one I chose. You can also choose to have your subjects printed in on here. Now, I did not get my subjects printed in on here because I'm just not sure the order that we're going to do them in next year. But my son, I went ahead and had the subjects printed in on his because I wanted to show that to you. So I'll show that to you when we get to it. But you have a Monday through Friday look, and then you just have a box for the weekend in case you have big plans and you want to see that on there. You have where you can write week of in on there. And there's seven, I think. Two, four, six. Yeah, seven subjects, and it's vertical, which I love because you can just be looking at this small book just like this, and you see all of your Monday, all of your Tuesday, all of your Wednesday, and you see your entire week in a one page spread. I love that <laughs> because I don't have room to be laying out the whole book all the time on the table with us. And I also love how this outlines your whole week and this is about your whole week too. This is a daily checklist. So anything you wanna remember happens every day. Like, do I want to keep track of our, like, scripture study every day and see, did we hit that every day? I can just put a simple check mark. Do I want to track, um, you know, just other things like that that maybe are not listed on our subject list, but I want to make sure happen a certain number of times a week? I think this daily checklist is great for that. Or if your child's, you know in charge of certain things and you want to track how they're doing on that on your own in your book. Anyway, there's a section for that and notes. You have three blank boxes. I like that because lots of freedom, anything, notes you want to scribble in for the week. Goals this week, I love that. Think about your goals that week and check them off. Inspiring thoughts and then your meal plan for the week is tucked right in here and I think that is so smart. So looking at this, you have your whole scope of your whole week. So for every week, it is a two-page spread. And that is the bulk of the planner, going through the entire planner. But like I said, there are some choices about what your two-page spread looks like. Okay, the last tab is record keeping and notes. So let's take a look at this. You have important dates to remember, and they have it outlined by month. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And so every month has date, events, and or event, and notes. So I think that's really, it's great. You can put doctor appointments. You can put field trips. You can put big family things on there. You can put anything you want to remember for that month. Or it could be like keeping track of what big things happen that month even after the fact as kind of like a journaling record keeping um, glance back. Resources for reference. So a contact list, name and information, other resources like resources you want to remember and notes about it, favorite websites you want to remember, more websites and user pass username passwords. Healthcare information log. So this is just kind of where I would write if we had to take any sick days in homeschool just to keep track of, but this can be for doctor visits, dental visits. They even give you a monthly bill sheet if you want to keep track of that in here. And then listing out all your homeschool expenses. I think this is genius. This is so great. It's right in the back of your planner and you can keep track and just list that all out. And at the end of the year, see, you know, how much did you spend? Because I have no idea to be personally um, honest about that. And then a lending library, which is also really smart because a lot of times you lend out books or resources and you don't remember. <laughs> and
And also books or materials you borrow, that's a good one too because they can get lost in your house, in your own bookshelf, and you even forgot that you had someone's book. Then there's a good chunk of note pages at the end and you have some big boxes where you could diagram um, or do mind maps or any kind of doodling or anything you want to do there. But there's a good chunk of note pages, which I love too. Then you have um, some really good pockets at the back. And I like that these are heavy duty and taller pockets so they can really hold a full size piece of paper securely. You have a blue one and a white one in here. And the pocket is only on one side, but it can hold a good chunk of paper because it's, it's a substantial pocket. And I believe those are added on. Yeah. Um, but it was like $2. I'm looking at my sheet right now. It was $2 to add on my two pockets. So for the things you add on to this planner, they do not up and overcharge you. I mean, that's it. It's like $1 a pocket to add it. Then you have a really nice thick back, you know, you could spill drink on this and it would be fine, black to the back of your pant planner. So that is the teacher homeschool planner. I personally think it's the best homeschool planner I have come across. I am really impressed by it. I love the fonts they've used. I love the setup they've used. And I think it's just, it's a really great tool for a homeschool mom. Okay, let's take a look at the student planner. And um, let's see, let me see if I've forgotten to tell you anything important. You can start your calendars in any month you want. Um, the full co color covers, the customizable option with your pictures. Adding the pockets, especially to the student planner is good, I think, because for unfinished work or assignments. Um, and I just think it's awesome for them to have this, even if your state is not a state that make, mandates that you keep track of records and turn any type of thing in, which our state, Texas, does not mandate that, which I'm really happy about. Um, but I think it's so nice to have a permanent record of each school year. And this would be like your child's permanent record of that year. They could design their cover. They can put in a picture they want or pick from one of their pre-made um, covers. And I just think with them getting to put their name on it and design the cover, they would feel some real um, ownership over this. And like this is their, you know, their record of their school year. And I think it makes such a nice thing, a keepsake for that as well as really help serve them through the school year. So, like I said, they have several a couple of student planners. One's for early learners, pre-readers, and then this is just the student edition, and then there is a high school edition. So those are the three student editions they have there. Then they get the doodle page too. Um, there are some tips for them to how to get started with their student edition planner. And I actually like that these are in here because let's be honest, if I tried to maybe go through all this with my son, he probably wouldn't listen to much of what I was going through. But if I gave him this and just, you know, he got to read this on his own coming from someone else. Um, and also it's there as a reminder throughout the year if they wanna check back in it, I think that's a good page. A plan in place for my year. I love that. Plan, work, record, and keep. So I just can see um, homeschoolers getting excited about having their own planner, especially girls, probably. I have not shown this to my son yet, so we'll see. Um, he does like to write things down and plan, but it ebbs and flows. So it's not every week, but we'll see if we keep up with this next year. Um, my autobiography, I love how they put this in the front since this is kind of like your permanent record of the year and a keepsake. Okay, then we have divided first semester, second semester goals. I like this. It's making them think about goals. It's having them always written at the front of their planner and to look at and be reminded of and be accountable. Here is their chores and responsibilities chart for a.m. and p.m. and Monday through Sunday. So it's not just your school days. If you want them to be able to outline the weekends too. Also a list for what they need to just do every day and maybe the big monthly things that they need to check off. Then we have my study plan for first semester and second semester. So they can write in their course subject, 
They can write in any materials, books, or curriculum or ideas, and then any schedule or comments on it. I think that's just good because they can see and laid out what subjects they're doing that semester, you know, what books or materials go with it, and maybe at the end, you know, they can write how they're feeling about that subject and curriculum and, and have a separate one for second semester. First semester, second semester, long range planning. So you can write this out by the month, like each box could be a month, I'm thinking, and think about long range planning of what you want to do that month. Um, all right. First semester, second semester, resource list. So title, and this is about keeping track of books read, is at least how I would use it. Um, the author, did you buy, own, or borrow it, and notes about that book. So I love that you would just have a book list here from each semester of what you've read. It could be ones you do as a read aloud, as well as ones they read on their own and just on their free time. Okay, first semester time schedule. I love that they put this in and make kids start thinking about how will we use our time. And so they know what to expect. You can have their week mapped out for them. It's by hours from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. So it even goes for older kids, even though they have a separate one of these for high schoolers. Um, but, I mean, I don't think that's too late because my son, since he's homeschooled, um, he's most of the time reading in his bed till at least 10 o'clock. Uh, because I don't wake him up till 8.30 in the morning. And so, yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, so then we have first semester, second semester, saving and spending plan. I love that they thought of all these extras in here. It doesn't mean you have to use them all, but it's definitely something that some kids would thrive on and love to have. I think it's a valuable skill to learn to keep track of your money where it's going um, ways to earn, where to share, so you're already teaching them about giving and donating charitable interests. Okay, a plan in place for my summer. I love that she ends with this, and they do have a summer planner also. Um, but personal goals, vacation plans, service opportunities, sports and activities, ways to earn money, and books to read. I love this laid out for thinking about summer plans. That's always such a fun thing at the end of the school year to think about. So he got the same calendars that I got, and the fonts are just different, but 2018-19 year at a glance, and then started in September, and got through the whole year, so 12 months. Calendars, just one per day, and that is an add-on, but it is not much money. Um, how much was it? I just want to give you guys an idea that it was 99 cents. I'm not kidding, and you get to choose what month you start in. So to add this whole calendar section was 99 cents. Talk about them trying to make it affordable, okay? Weekly schedule is your next tab. So he has a weekly schedule that looked similar to mine, but I went ahead and had them type in his subjects on the side there, um, thinking that we will at least have these main subjects next year, um, I know. So math, language arts, our read aloud and scripture study, science, history, typing, and cursive. I like how there's a weekend review, how they can jot weekend plans down, and I like their effort or their grade. So whether you write that in for the week or whether they think about their effort for the week in that subject, that's nice to have on there. I love how their name is up here, and you can write your weekend and your week number in school, which I've said before, I really like to keep track of because we go um, by our public school, school district schedule, since my older child um, is in public school. And so we keep track of the week number that we're on since we go along with them. I just, I like to know. And so I love that that's up there and semester. Then they have their own daily checklist up here with efforts and notes. What I learned this week. I love that section. <laughs> notes. From that week, goals this week, things to do, um, character and personal right here, and your effort. Books I read this week, I love this section, and the rating stars, I love that. Field trips and our weekly activities, I like that too. Um, so I definitely think um, that this page has some really motivating and really fun 
and useful things on it. And I'm going to be excited to show it to my son. Okay, so that is the bulk of your planner. It is this two-page spread. That's your one week. And I just, I love the things that they've included. You can tell it was made and created and crafted by homeschool moms. And they know what they're doing. All right, record keeping and notes. So back here you have an attendance record. Um, which I don't really keep track of because we go on the school district schedule and I only write down if he takes a sick day, which has only happened like three days this whole school year. Um, so since we go by our, our school district schedule, I don't have to keep track of this, but I can totally see like my sister um, keeps track of theirs because they school year round because they take time off during the school year to do different traveling activities. And so she schools year round to be able to make up for that. And so I can see how other homeschool people would love to keep mamas, people, mamas would love to keep track of this. So you have your 12 months of the year and you have one through 31 days. So basically you can just color in or check off, keep track of how many days you school that month. So I can see that being really helpful for people who are not as regimented as following the, um, that don't have a child in public school where they have to follow those school days. Okay, first semester extracurricular activities to keep track of. I like that. And what did you do second semester? And then first semester field trip log. I love that they can fill this in. My favorite part, a detail I remember. And then they have two pages for second semester field trip log also. Then first semester books I read. And I love this, of course, with the rating system of the stars. So I almost want to start using this right now because um, it's we haven't kept track of something like this. It would be exciting to see all the titles he's read and to see his little rating of it. And then second semester books I read. First semester achievement log. So it's date, subject, description, result, and notes. So I think this is really good because many times in homeschool, I, I think I don't enough um, like recognize big achievements, like the bigger steps you're making it to. Um, and so I think that this would motivate me to do that. So I like this achievement log. And then second semester achievement log is two pages also. Then you have some notes pages, which I think is awesome. Then you have a progress report for academic, elective, and character. Effort, grade, and comments. So if you're a homeschool parent that wants to fill all this in, I think it's a great record for your child, and many children are highly motivated by that. First semester progress report, what worked well this semester? What are some things that need improvements, comments, and goals for next semester? And a grading scale and a parent signature and a student signature. I really like this. It's just looking at your semester and really letting them even voice their opinion, and you guys talk about together what went well and what didn't, and what can we work on. I like that semester wrap up. Um, and then second semester, you have your progress report again. And then second semester progress report wrap up. Then you get a year end review, which I love that this is in here. I really do. Um, it has things like things I liked about my homeschool year. One thing I would change about my homeschool year. My least favorite subject this year was. I think next year I would like to learn more about. I'm so happy I learned how to. My favorite family activity is. My most memorable field trip was. My favorite subject this year was. So I love this year in review. Um, I might just have to uh, photocopy that to use at the end of this year so that we don't use that one, which is for next year. So thinking ahead to next school year. And so it gives them a little place to think ahead um, to maybe what subjects they might be taking next year and how they might want to design their planner for next year since you can print those subjects in there ahead of time. Um, and this is showing you some things that you can change in your planner for next year. This is kind of thinking about how you want your planner next year. Do you want to pr print in your music practice, chores, reading time, exercise, such as that? Um, so they're giving you ideas of things you can put in your daily checklist for next year. You can, you can add those in already pre-printed in your book if you know what you want. And I love that they give you ideas. 
And I love that they give you this little thinking page of how do you want to design your planner for next year. And um, your weekly focus section, you can actually have pre-planned pre topics put in also. And so here they give you some ideas. And so when you go to order their planner, it's nice if you guys have already thought this through on here and filled all this out. You have all those ideas. And then I got also two folders for him. Um, and here it's just nice to have for any loose papers, unfinished work, um, things you want to remember. He got a green and blue. And then the same black cover as mine. And if you want to look, the teacher planner is a tiny bit bigger. This is the teacher planner, the one in the front. Uh, the teacher planner feels a little bit bigger than the student planner because it just has a few more extra pages, but it's not huge, and neither of them is huge or bulky or heavy. I absolutely love these planners. I love what this company offers. I have to say, um, I wasn't sure that I would be super impressed with these planners, but um, once I got them, they far exceed my expectations far exceed my expectations. And so, and they are so affordable. What I would say is make sure you look at all the options you can customize on their website when you're making yours. Make sure you look into all those. Don't do a rush order. Don't rush through this process. It is not hard. It's not hard at all. But just make sure you look at all the options and make your planner just the way that it'll work the best for you or your child before you order. And if you have any questions, email them before you order. All right, guys, that is all I have. The company is a plan in place for homeschool planners, student homeschool planners, so many options. I'm really impressed by them. Thanks for watching. Happy planning, you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.